watching CNN. I'm Robin Kerner. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to take you now to Washington, a city often divided by its viewpoints. Today, united in grief. A funeral mass will be said next hour for Supreme Court Justice Antonin Scalia in this basilica. Scalia died suddenly last weekend at age 79. Four of his sons will be pallbearers and another son, a Catholic priest, will deliver the homily. Well, Scalia was a conservative icon on the bench for 30 years. For more on this, I want to bring in our legal analyst, Philip Holloway. He was a big man. He had a big personality in all senses, didn't, what, didn't he? He absolutely did. He was an icon. Whether you agree with him politically, whether you agree with him legally, there's no question in anybody's mind that he was absolutely a powerhouse on the court. And uh, he was admired by people uh, on all sides of the political spectrum, uh, universally almost in the legal community. Now, there's, of course, going to be some people that didn't agree with him, didn't like him, but... Uh, he was a, by all accounts, a very, very nice person, a genuine person, and, and someone who honestly believed in the convictions that he put into paper. Indeed, and, and why was he respected so much? I mean, a lot of his, um, a lot of his work was was dissident. I mean, he was the dissident voice often in the court. Uh, he had some very pointed and sharply written uh, judgments. Uh, why was he so beloved, even if people disagreed with him? Well, I think it's because he spoke his mind. He didn't hold back. He let you know exactly where he stood on things. And quite frankly, he was, in my view, a little bit mislabeled. He wasn't the far right jurist that a lot of people think he is. He had a libertarian streak in him. Um, a lot of folks in the criminal law community, for example, have hailed him from time to time when he has breathed life back into certain parts of the Constitution, specifically the Fourth Amendment. Um, and in other cases about you know, policy, uh, of course, he might be more aligned with the right than the left, but sometimes he's right down the middle. He has joined with so-called liberal ju justices uh, to form a five-person majority. So uh, there is a place on the court, in my view, for people from uh, all, with, with all philosophies, both left and right, because sometimes it takes a mesh of those philosophies to come to the right conclusion. And what was so important about Justice Scalia was that he was on this court for 30 years, and in, in this past generation, he did manage to mold it in a way, and this, he has defined not just jurisprudence, but American life in many ways, because this Supreme Court in the U.S. is incredibly influential. Yes, the, it, our Constitution in the United States creates only one court, and that is the Supreme Court of the United States. All other courts uh, are created either by states or in, in the federal system by Congress as a, by passing laws that create the, them. But speaking of his tenure on the court of 30 years, it's important that you point that out. Justice Scalia himself has, has written that uh, it was not lost on him that he is a member of nine judges who have been there too long imposing demands on society. So he realized his place in uh, our national government. Uh, he, I think, understood that a constitution is not something that is to be tinkered with lightly. He didn't believe that it was a living and breathing document. He believed that it is what it said it was. He was known as a textualist, an originalist. He analyzed statutes based on what their words were, not what nine superhuman judges uh, seem to think they should mean. That was his underlying philosophy, and he was true to that philosophy from day one uh, until the day he died. A legal icon, a towering figure, an extraordinary jurist. I mean, the, the words and the descriptions about him go on. A lot of people will be mourning him today in that mass. Thank you very we much. We certainly will. Thank you for having me.